All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So this one is actually a quick preview of a very detailed, beautiful study. I wanted to give you a summary. The summary is this. The dental, the School of Dental Medicine from uh, University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, they have done this study where they have invented a chewing gum which can mop up the not only the ACE, the SARS-CoV-2, but influenza virus as well. And they have shown that in vitro it works. And now they are doing trials. And they said that there has been attempts to deliver medicines using chewing gum in the past, for example, insulin or aspirin or other, but those molecules were unstable and they would not release correctly. On the other hand, they have invented the chewing gum and the substance with which it is made that makes it stable during the manufacturing and then during the chewing to allow it to release the, the substances and capture the viruses. Beautiful study. Let's, let's do it. Just a quick one. The study is a really long study, but I wanted to go over some summary parts of it. So let's see. This is drbean.com. Once again, the link is in the description if you would like to buy access to this one. This is the most inexpensive access to 900 lectures. Okay, so this is one. Links in the description. This is a study. The study says debulking different coronaviruses, SARS-CoV-2, Delta, Omicron, OC43, and influenza virus strains by plant viral trap proteins in chewing gums to decrease infection and transmission. <laughs> that is what they're doing. So let me explain with my own drawings because I want to draw this. So we start from here. If the study works and if this method works, which I think it will, then we might just have the over-the-counter chewing gums to say, go chew them. And then the discussions will be, I don't want to chew, <laughs> chew a chewing gum, etc. So here is how it works. A lettuce-based mesh is used from a plant, lettuce plant. And what they did was a protein from the lettuce plant is used to attach human ACE2 to it. So imagine this is ACE2. This is the plant protein. And this is manufactured in a chewing gum. I do not know if it is a bubble gum as well or not but this is a chewing gum. <laughs> this is such a cute thing. Now what happens is, when we chew this chewing gum, first thing that is important is that during the manufacturing process, the extreme heat does not destroy the ACE2 when it is bound with the plant's uh, chlorophyll or plant's proteins. That is one. Second, when we are chewing it, it continues to release or open up those little particles in it for 20 minutes. And now when we are chewing it, what it does is that those particles that have this ACE2 attached with them, the ACE2s are human ACE2. So what they do is they have this virus and virus is all crying now. Why? Because the virus got trapped in the ACE2. And when it got trapped in the ACE2, it's all upset and cry, crying baby, but it has been trapped and picked up in the chewing gum. And as you keep chewing, you keep mopping up the virus with these ACE2s and the virus keeps getting stuck in the chewing gum. And they say that when they did the trial, the, they, they had the powder of this chewing gum instead of the gum. They had the powder and they cultured the virus with it. And the powder attached to the virus and brought it down to non-detectable state. 
it neutralized it so fast and so quickly that it became it became destroyed so it became to a non detectable state within a few whatever hours so <laughs> this is beautiful so that is one second they took another plant um lub lub I, I'll, i'll talk about the pl plant's name when i go there that plant has a protein called frill protein in it so this was a ctb i think this is a chlorophyll protein on the latter side chlorophyll bound with the humanase 2 then there is another plant that has a protein called frill protein the frill protein likes to bind with the uh, parts so let's say this is the virus um sars cov 2 remember it has glycose amino glycans or the spi the spike proteins and the parts of the envelopes have glucoses in them in in general terms this frill protein can bind with these parts and once again it can precipitate them so it binds it it traps the virus it is actually a neutralization of the virus so once it precipitates it it captures it and so when it traps it our mouth becomes debulked of the virus so that is a basic idea for both of those and they've tried them both so let me show you <laughs> this is such a beautiful study what should i do run around saying this is a beautiful study so this henry daniel and one more thing the credit where credit is due dr tommy zaharakis sent this to me and dr zaharakis would join us on 5th august as well for a he's a practicing doctor and a teaching doctor so you would really love his uh, company so here debulking different coronaviruses this is dr henry daniel school of dental medicine university of pennsylvania philadelphia corresponding author department of basic and translation science school of dental medicine university of pennsylvania here because of oral transmission of sars cov 2 three to five orders of magnitude higher the oral transmission is three to five orders higher than the nasal transmission so of course the nose cannot have the chewing gum so if we said that hey man the chewing gum is useless because the virus is coming from the nose then we have a problem so they're saying that mouth transmission is three to five times higher than the nose we investigated debulking of oral viruses using viral trap proteins ctb as2 so that is one plant from lettuce the chlorophyll attached with as2 that is a synth synthesized uh, part and or the frill protein from the other plant expressed in plant cells delivered through the chewing gum in omicron nasopharyngeal samples the micro bubble count so the micro bubble count is the technique to count the n protein and the and the density of or concentration of them remember the n proteins are part of the actually they are inside the virus and they are protecting the viral genetic material and for nucleocapsid proteins so you can measure their density with micro bubble testing or you can measure the spike proteins so here the micro bubble count was significantly reduced by 20 microgram of frill and look at the p value 0.0001 so if it was a chance it was really one in a what 10000 and 0.925 microgram of ctb as2 again p value 0.0001 meaning it is not a just by chance thing that happened among 20 delta or omicron nasopharyngeal samples 17 had virus load reduced below the detection level of spike protein in the rapid assay after incubation with the ctb as2 gum powder so they took the nasopharyngeal samples from 20 people they had this powder ready with either the frill protein or ctb and as2 with them and they incubated them and the virus just got trapped a dose dependent 
50% plaque reduction with 50 to 100 nanogram frill or 60, 600 to 800 microgram frill gum against influenza strain H1N1 and coronavirus HCOV OCH43 was observed with both purified frill lab lab bean powder or gum. So what are they saying here? They are giving you the exact doses that this much of the dose of that powder was able to trap influenza virus and the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So you get two in one. I am looking, I'm sounding like their salesman. I love this technique. These are better than injecting spikes in people. In electron micrograph, large densely packed clumps of overlapping influenza particles and frill protein were observed. Chewing simulator studies so they, they simulated chewing in little boxes or whatever. Chewing simulator studies revealed that CTBAS2 release was time dose dependent and release were linear up to 20 minutes of chewing. Phase 1-2 placebo-controlled double-blinded clinical trial is in the progress to evaluate viral load in saliva before or after chewing CTBAS2 or placebo gum. And I want to share with you their diagrams. They are beautiful. So this is a diagram. Here is the lattice. Here is the SARS-CoV-2. And what you can see here is this. Look at the right side. This little red part is the plant protein. And the green part is ACE2, human ACE2. They combine them together. This combination is in these little tablets that you see on the top here. And these tablets have these little parts. And when these, when we chew them, these little uh, machines from the chewing gum would catch the virus and then trap it and precipitate it. And so, of course, they are neutralizing it, they're removing it, and the viral load is reducing. And of course, not only infectivity is reducing, not the infectivity of the virus, but the infection in us, our cells, plus the transmission is also reducing because the virus is stuck in the chewing gum now. That is a fitting response to this virus that, hey, we would trap you in a chewing gum. Okay, then here, B. This is the other plant. I think it is called lublub plant. This has a protein here as well. This little orange thing is its protein. And this protein binds to SARS-CoV-2 and spike and influenza hemagglutinins here. So that is one. Then down here, so if I give you a quick glance, look at the study's length. It's a big study. So anyways, I want to show you a couple of more things here. There was a picture here of the results. Here, check this one out. This is a, um, this chewing gum powder treated viral nasopharyngeal sample with the virus. So if you see here on the left, there are two patients nasopharyngeal samples. The very first left diagrams are where the patient's nasopharyngeal sample is not treated with this powder. And you can see that these are bubbles that are forming, so there is infection. And as they add various doses of the frill in the powder, you see that the, the virus bubbles are gone. So see here, it just clears them out. So that is one which is interesting. Then here, if you see, this is a similar thing, but with the chlorophyll and the ACE2. This is from the lattice. So here, once again, if you see, this is the patient's nasopharyngeal sample growing the virus. And as they give various doses, the virus just disappears. This is patient 614, 615, 151, so these are untreated patients. So if you thought that, well, they're just going to disappear by themselves, viruses. So these are untreated in the beginning. And then if you see various doses. Untreated here, 25 milligram, 50 milligram, there is no virus. 
it goes below the detection levels. So this is the discussion. I was just so excited. My normal traditional way of presenting this will be to draw this whole thing out. But it was just too much for me to wait on. So once again, lettuce and lub lub. I want to show you the name of this. It is lab lab bean powder or soluble extract of frill chewing gum. Lab lab. So that red was lab lab. Okay, so this is it. Thank you very much for being here. There is a chewing gum they've made. They're now doing clinical trials on it with it. And that chewing gum has human ACE2 in it or lab lab powder, which that powder, that protein doesn't need ACE2. It actually directly binds with these viruses, which have viruses that have glucoses in them. So it can actually bind with the influenza or SARS-CoV-2 as well without the need of ACE2. So they have two type of products and now they're doing trials in them. These products are stable during manufacturing. They can stay on the shelf for a long time. They can be chewed and for 20 minutes they can keep releasing the, the active ingredients from them and these pick up the viruses, precipitate them, debulk the, the mouth area, reduce the infection and reduce the transmission. This is University of Philadelphia, University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Good job on their dental team. Thank you. And I would see you tomorrow. Please like, subscribe, and share. In the description of this video, there are links. If you would like to support this work, you can use PayPal. You can buy me a coffee. You can become a Substack member. You can become a patron. You can become a locals member. You can become Dr. Bean member. Or you can become YouTube member. Thank you very much. And the least, like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you tomorrow.